Hi, I'm Matt Sinclair, and I want to talk to you about the digital ads market. You might have seen the news that uh, BuzzFeed News is going to be uh, closing, and I think that's a reminder just how precarious it can be to exist in the world of digital advertising and social media content. You know, that market has been changing a lot for a couple of years now, but in many ways, a lot of that's coming to a head. I think it comes to it on two levels. Firstly, there's a lot going on in the market, some pretty fundamental changes to um, features of that market that people had thought were, might, might be here, or, here almost forever. And secondly, there's diverse regulations all around the world that platforms are wrestling with. Uh, and this is going to have consequences for all kinds of organisations. Right? Digital ads market is hugely important to all kinds of businesses selling goods and services, trying to reach cons consumers. It's also important to a whole wide range of media uh, that directly or indirectly uh, get their money uh, from advertising, everything from kind of big sports teams to small content creators. So we'll dive right in when we're going to step through six trends, three trends in the market, three trends uh, going on in regulation right now that it's worth you knowing about if you want to understand what is going on in this enormous digital ads uh, ecosystem. So first, if we start with market trends, there's a lot going on um, w without governments or other kind of regulatory decisions stepping in at all. And the first big thing I'd point to is, of course, like this is a market that always exaggerates instability in the, in the wider economy. You know, I've got up here a, um, a, a, a cutting from, a, from an academic article, but I think the crucial point here is this is a market that exaggerates the business cycle. In bad times, it does worse, about 40% worse is what this, this is saying. But, you know, and this can be really testing for businesses that depend on the ad market. If they stick it out, it does tend to recover far, faster. That's the flip side of this uh, cyclic, cyclicality. And crucially, businesses that keep advertising in a downturn tend to get stronger returns. You think about it, there's just less competition as, as other businesses cut, cut back. Um, so it's not all doom and gloom, but it is a market where if there are business models that are in any way marginal, they're going to get discovered uh, when there's a downturn. I think the second big trend is massive growth outside of Google and Facebook, which had for a long time you know, have been the, the, the biggest players in, in digital advertising. Um, the two big examples are TikTok and Amazon. TikTok, just you know, fantastic growth in its video sharing plat platform. Um, trying to encourage advertisers often to engage with its creator e economy um, and you know, just a fantastically successful uh, you know, consumer platform, which means it's got a lot of, um, uh, it's just got a lot to offer advertisers. And secondly, Amazon, um, you know, that e a lot of this is relating to its e-commerce business, its advertisers promoting goods. Although of course, Amazon also includes Twitch, also includes Prime, Prime Video. You know, Benedict Evans, the tech commentator, has looked at this. He reckons this could be as big a contributor to Amazon's profits as uh, cloud, uh, AWS. So it's a huge, you know, that's kind of famous as the kind of the really profitable bit of the of, of the Amazon conglomerate. So this huge growth in in newer players, in these fast grow, grow, growing growing players. But not just them, right? There's also outright new entrants. And, you know, I picked a couple of high profile examples here. There's, but, you know, there's a lot of new AVOD players as consumers start to, you know, sometimes struggle to afford subscriptions. Advertising based packages are a way of uh, getting cheap TV. Um, and at the same time, you've got some of the subscription players, Netflix, Disney being two, the two biggest examples, launching ads funded packages, again, in order to kind of provide customers with lower cost uh, options. And again, this is new places to put your video ad. It's new places for what used to be the big linear TV advertising spending to go. So yeah, again, you add these new players coming in, rapid growth at, um, at, at sort of already big challenges in the in the digital digital ad market and this and you know all of that kind of cyclical business cycle change and this market is is it's there's an awful lot going going on which you know it would be easy to miss in a kind of story of you know well because of these network effects you lock people in but you know look 
despite all that, if, if you know, however powerful you think that is, there's an awful lot going on in this market, and there are people essentially leveraging their strengths in other markets, leveraging the strength of their content. If you're talking about Netflix and Disney, uh, leather, leveraging you know the uh, customer uh, connections of of uh, of, of, Am of Amazon, that e-commerce business, it's leveraging the enormous you know, success of that you know video sharing platform for TikTok, and that's allowing them to build really big digital ads businesses. So there's a lot going on in the market, but at the same time, there are already these massive regulatory tra trends uh, all around the world. You know, th this is this is um, uh, you know, certainly being pioneered, I think particularly in uh, Europe, but there's a lot going on everywhere. So if we start with the first one, is the big new general rules. And it's worth saying here that there's there's regulators in the kind of sense of government of public bodies um but there's also regulators in the sense of the platforms themselves acting as regulators and i think it's good to think of these as a package um and sometimes you can have organizations which kind of take on both roles so um you know google for example might be regulated by the eu by well by national via national governments um but it might also regulate uh, what businesses do uh, on the on its uh, operating system or in its ad net network, and so you can also have businesses. So, say Facebook, for example, is regulated by by governments with say online safety regulation. Uh, it's regulated by platforms. So, Apple and Google, you know, sort of have set terms for what it can do on their operating systems, and it regulates content producers, you know, like Buzz, Buzz, Buzzfeed. It makes sort of uh, decisions about how they access the market within its eco within its ecosystem and i think the first thing to say is that there's an awful lot going here around how data is used so the platforms have announced restrictions around how data is collected and, and used um you know so so apple's restrictions on tracking are, would be an example a lot of people will have seen you know their own phones asking asking them about but then that's combined with you know, continuing evolution in the government regulation of how they use they use data. So an example I've given here, and it's uh, you know it's at the bottom of this page, is gatekeepers can't com can't process data of end use from third from third parties. But it's essentially affecting how they combine data sets within their within their their their, their, pla their platform. Um, so if you're using a service, uh, you know, within uh, a digital platform company's pl platform, but it's a service run by another company in there, then you know that, that they they aren't able to take that data and and, and use and, and um, process it to support their own online their their own online advertising business. So there's all of these new restrictions coming in. Over 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 time, which affects the flow of data, and therefore affects businesses' ability to uh, serve ads to specific consumers, and then to know whether those consumers have subsequently purchased. So it's 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 targeting and then and then attribution understanding. Um, who are we selling? Who sort of, sort of targeting who we're selling at, and understanding whether we just, whether that's led to a led to a sale, and all of that will change how advertisers uh, use digital advertising uh, to go to market. The um, at the same time, there's the big safety regulations, and a lot of these address advertising pretty exactly. So on the right there, I've got the online safe the, the online safety bill in the UK as an example. Now. The online safety bill is still subject to change. It's not not complete. Uh, it's not quite as finalised as the uh, Digital Markets Act or, or the uh, uh, Digital Services Act in the, in the EU. But it's, I think, a good example here again of how rules are being set up, uh, which put the onus on the platforms um, uh, more than ever to prevent people hitting harmful content and that includes harmful ads you know particularly here fraudulent adverts and i think it's worth saying that these come with absolutely massive potential fines right so to right up to kind of 10 percent of global turnover and if you've got massive fines attached to requirements to um prevent people 
hitting, you know, say fraud, fraudulent ads. And you know that you can only do that imperfectly. That it's a hard thing to do because you know, the people putting the fraudulent ads up are trying to outwit you. You need to you know, outdo uh, these these fraudsters, and they'll do things like vary the content of the ad, vary the, the vary the um, name of the advertiser. Right? They they they're going to try and get get this advert through. And if they're doing that, um, then what platforms may fall back on? If they, if you know, if their own systems, if their own defences can't keep up, uh, is shutting down entire categories, uh, is is taking a very cautious cautious approach, and if they aren't confident uh, about a certain about a certain ad or indeed non-advertising con content, you know, if that fine is large enough, uh, despite the costs, this is not a trivial thing to do. You are on the side of caution and take stuff off the plat platform. Uh, and so you've got a wide range of these kind of general regulations, which both affect how the platforms operate generally, but also specifically address how they handle advertising. And that's also going to reshape the digital ads market. And it's worth saying, as well as those general ads, you also have more sector specific rules. So. A lot of this is taking what historically have been essentially self-regulatory codes. Yeah, you know, that's not not to say you know that you know at any point there were points at which advertising could cross a line and become become illegal. But a lot of the way advertising has historically been regulated is through um, self-regulatory codes policed by um, uh, you know, advertising regulators, um, which had kind of pretty limited teeth compared to kind of the new stuff that's coming through at the moment. But what we're seeing at the moment is that um, this is extending into more formal laws and regular laws and regu regulation. Uh, and in some cases, this includes kind of advertisers which have always had a role, uh, sorry, regulators which have always had a role around advertising, extending more into digital markets. So the FCA's concern about um, the basically the promotion of, of, of products that are supposed to be for professional investors to small investors um, leads it to, to generally feel like it has to take action to stop fraudulent advertising but often it doesn't stop there because the regulators are this is a big task for regulators to take to take on and so what they will often do is say okay how can we ensure that this is done more broadly how can we ensure that um, this isn't just kind of us using our kind of established toolkit and established resources to try and police these you know enormous um, kind of digital spaces and so what they do is push for action i think it's no accident that the the fca gets very concerned about you know the, the promotion of inappropriate um, financial services ads on digital platforms and then subsequently the online safety bill is looking to introduce you know with these huge great teeth in the form of large potential fines um regulations that require platforms to take to to uh, prevent fraudulent ads so this sector specific category can spill over into the general category and there's plenty more examples outside these sectors political ads for example would be another one that's had a lot of attention because of concerns over election integrity but you know basically any sector that where there's perceived consumer harm there's been worries about do we need to step in and regulate ad, digital advertising in some some way and that's affecting the balance of who is going to market in these digital in these digital spaces and it's affecting the demand for, adver for, for advertising space. So again, it's, it's not separate to all of those market trends. And then finally, and I think this is the one which could be the most profound in many ways, but it's um, easy to overlook. And I think the impacts are gonna be kind of the hardest to predict, although you know they are worth thinking about and trying to understand where, where it's gonna go. It's a huge amount of additional data coming. You know, these networks have been criticized a lot in the past for their opacity. But it's quite hard for anyone to really understand what's going on uh, in the digital ad network when you've often got um, you know, multiple intermediaries uh, that these platforms are complex webs of, uh, of different um, tools and different um, organizations and brands. Um, and so there's a lot of requirements coming out to say more. 
Uh, I think I'm going to do a separate video about, about regulatory disclosures coming and what they're going to tell us about how the internet works uh, at another point. But I think particularly for advertising, the important one here is the Digital Markets Act. And this is an EU regulation. But crucially, think about it, this is a regulation this, which is requiring them to, to say, say things about how digital ad markets work. And digital ad markets aren't kind of unique in the EU. These ad networks, as far as I'm aware, they work pretty similarly in the EU or in the UK or in the US for that matter. I'm sure there are differences, but fundamentally these are in large part kind of global platforms working to kind of common systems and, and approaches. Uh, and so everyone should be able to learn from this data. Uh, and it's going to be a huge amount of information pro provided you know, to huge frequency and granularity telling people um, about what's being paid and who's making money out of digital advertising networks. And I think the impact of that could be huge, right? Because we don't know what people are going to discover, but you know, it is pretty well established that new source of information can shift how people negotiate. negotiate. It's going to suggest opportunities to people. It's going to suggest where they might be you know, doing worse than they thought they were, where there might be opportunity that they, they that they hadn't seen up until now. Um, and I, you know, it, I think it's obviously designed to enable, encourage, facilitate other kinds of changes in how digital platforms are regulated. Because of course, yes, there's these big laws going in, but there's also a load of regulators, competition regulators, for example, who have all kinds of pre-existing and often being augmented powers to intervene in these markets. And this is gonna give them a pile new of extra information to use. It's gonna give policy advocates of all kinds of a pile of extra information to use. And I suspect, although a lot of this is gonna be provided to advertisers, or to media by the platforms, I wouldn't be surprised if someone is able to aggregate these, you know, go out there, establish a panel of advertisers, a panel of media companies, look at their across their data and try and look for patterns, aggregates, estimate big, big, bigger picture numbers. Um, you know, someone should, because uh, there's a business to be had in, in doing that, definitely. So we're going to find out more about how digital ad networks work than we ever knew before. I think that's going to be a big deal. I think that's going to change. It's going to, going to give people um, insights. And, you know, a lot may, they may look at it and be like, this is, we are getting a fantastic deal. Or they may look at it in, and feel like um, they're, being, they're being ripped off. Or they may just look at it and see an opportunity. Um, and I suspect the answer will vary depending on which media, which advertiser, which platform, Etc. Etc. It's not going to be one, you know, universal answer, but there will be an awful lot in there because that's an awful lot of data, um, and you know, often something comes out of that kind of disclosure. So look, stepping back, um, what can we learn from this? What 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 should we take from all this? Well, I think the first point is, uh, I think everyone is affected here and as i mentioned right at the start there's a whole wide range of businesses that's uh, you know in the media and entertainment and tech sectors that work directly with advertising and a whole wide range more uh, who use ad uh, advertising to reach consumers need to be thinking about these trends thinking about how they'll affect their businesses but crucially they need to think about them as a whole I worry that often there's the government affairs, the regulatory folk over here who are worrying about how we're going to you know, satisfy regulatory um, expectations. And then over here, there's the commercial folk and the strategy folk who are thinking about how we're going to make money. Um, and they, and that, that can often mean that, that interactions between these trends and that kind of cumulative effect um, doesn't necessarily get the thinking it needs. I say, what will it take for our business to prosper in the advertising environment of next year and of five years down 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 the line? Uh, I think that's the kind of question that all this brings up for me, and I think it's really important. But as we, you know, we come down a level, I think firstly advertisers. Advertisers are going to have to think about uh, how will this affect how they um, uh, go to market and how will this affect their ability to prioritise um, within their advertising budgets. Uh, media companies are going to think about where are their opportunities 
uh, if only because other ways of reaching consumers get closed down. And where there might there be threats, you know, there's always the risk, I think, you know, the BuzzFeed news closure is a reminder of this, that businesses that flourished uh, in one platform ecosystem with one set of regulation, one set of market norms may not prosper over time. And you, know, you do not want to be behind that curve. Uh, intermediaries, I mean, the big challenge for intermediaries is just the sheer range of changes taking place globally. I think they need to step back to what regulators are looking to achieve and how they can build systems that allow them to satisfy diverse global requirements uh, without a, an endless multiplication of systems which are already you know, you know, very challenging to run. And finally, I think the regulators themselves need to step back and think about some of these trends because there's always a huge risk of kind of fighting the last war, of regulating for the market as it was five years ago or a year ago, not a year from now or five years down the line. So, you know, all of this change is challenging for people operating around advertising. But I think that, uh, you know, it will also mean a lot of exciting opportunities for people to seize. So look, with that, I would love to know what you think. I'd love to know if you, if you have any questions. Uh, please do drop them uh, down in the comments. Uh, thank you so much for your time and I look forward to seeing you again uh, for the next one.